And we are on the Acropolis of Athens. It's just behind me. And I'm looking down towards the north and northeast here. What we see in front of us is the Agora or the Market Square, which we will discuss uh, very soon. Let's go back to the Acropolis. If we look down here, actually up here, we see the bastion, the projecting bastion that was originally intended for the Mycenaean walls that are hidden within the new masonry. Um, this is the restoration of the 5th century. Um, in the original, in the, in, in the real uh, Athens, if you go, you could see two windows um, that allow you to actually see the remains of the Mycenaean walls. On top of it, um, in the Hellenic period, this small temple to Athena Nike was uh, built. Huh? And as you can see, it's uh, projecting forward and it's very visible probably from down there as well. And it's one of the few buildings of the Acropolis that can be seen from, from down. And it's Ionic. And remember the political implications uh, of this. As we move up towards the entrance, I want to show you better the small temple of Athena Nike. Now, the game is set in around 431. I think this building wasn't finished yet, but it's good that we can see it now. And actually, you see there is a construction site here. Uh, the order is Ionic, four columns, so Tetra style. We have a very interesting continuous frieze with the depiction of the war between the Persians and the Athenians and the Greeks. And uh, it's again one of the first times together with the Parthenon where humans are portrayed on the frieze of a temple rather than the gods or the heroes. Huh? Uh, this is the entrance, it's actually uh, it's in the wrong side, the entrance should be in the opposite direction. We can see um, the four columns, then we have two pillars and then the naos where the woman is praying. It has four columns in the front, as you can see, and four columns in the back, but no columns on the sides. And this makes the building an amphi pro style. Huh? When the columns are only in the front, then it's a pro style building. But if it is uh, double amphi, huh? both sides are pro style so it becomes amphi pro style um, let's move uh, towards the entrance and this is it it's the propylia it looks like a doric temple it's not a temple it's just an entrance monumental entrance it is hexa style uh, so with six columns in the front and very doric looking with the frieze and the cornice it has two wings projecting out, one here and one there, um, like to hug you know, sort of the uh, incoming visitor. Uh, the building is not completely Doric. I mean, it looks Doric, but we will see there are some elements from the Ionic tradition, which is uh, very important culturally and politically. Remember this room to the left? is the Pinacotheca. It used to have benches for people to sit and it was probably a little bit larger than this. And it has paintings hanging on the wall, uh, walls uh, with um, stories related to the gods but also to the Athenians. And if we look out from this door we have this very nice effect of half dark and half light. Uh, if you look uh, the vision is split in half directly where the man is is the outside full of light and behind him is the interior of uh, the propylia darker and it's an interesting treatment of uh, space volumes and light now if we cross the entrance we see that the inside has ionic columns rather than doric you see the bays you see the flutes and the capitals. Uh, three from one side and three from the other. And what is the um, advantage? It's that the ionic columns are slender and taller, so they occupy less space and there is more light and more room inside the propylia. When we cross, the other side is actually again back to Doric. 
hexa style six columns and pro style the columns are in front of the building as you can see um, we turn here and we can see a very nice doric looking uh, building uh, with the six columns a very nice tapering and very nice emphasis shown uh, here in front of us there is the colossal statue of the goddess Athena and behind her originally you would have the remains of the old temple of Athena Polias destroyed by the Persian which is not reproduced in this reconstruction you wouldn't have a garden would have the ruins uh, left there on purpose to remind people of uh, the destruction caused by the Persians uh. now to uh, the right of the entrance we can see the corner of the Parthenon uh. it's uh, not a frontal view we see both sides and the corner which is interesting and this is the back of the building as well uh, because Greek temples usually face the east now we will look at the Parthenon in a minute what I want to do here now is um, go along this way which is the Panathenaia uh, uh, road the end of it um, the, uh, the street of the uh, festival where every year the citizenship of Athens would go up and turn here and finally enter the Erechtheion. Uh, remember, the main feast doesn't concern the Parthenon, but concerns the Erechtheion. This very nice Ionic building, um, very, very elaborate in plan and execution. Uh, Hexa style Ionic. If we enter, we'll follow the path of the procession where people would come in and bring clothes, new clothes every year for a wooden statue of Athena. So this place was the focus of the festival. Huh? Now we see the entrance here at, uh, at this level, but then we have a staircase going down and another entrance down there. So one entrance there, one entrance here on different levels. And this was done on purpose to maintain uh, the look of the landscape as it was original, uh, uh, originally made. Uh, this is the building that celebrates the religious mythological history of Athens with uh, the fight or the, uh, the tender between Poseidon and Athena to become the patrons of the city and there is the tomb of Erechtheus, uh, hence the name Erechtheion. So they wanted to preserve um, the rocky uh, hilltop uh, with different levels without modifying and leveling and anything to keep uh, the original uh, look so the other entrance here to the north is um, also ionic uh, pro style in this case tetra style and here we would have at the top in that corner we would have um, an opening to mark the passage of the trident of poseidon and here we would have an opening on the floor showing the um, cistern with salty water created by uh, the trident. Uh, if we enter here, we are not allowed to go inside, uh, but we would go towards the tomb of Erechtheus. Now the building changes again. Uh, we are now at ground level. We see the garden and the rocks. And uh, the western side has these four engaged ionic columns, engaged because they are embedded uh, in the wall. Uh, this is a feature that the Athenians probably took from southern Italy, where it is quite common, especially in buildings dedicated to gods of the afterlife. Uh. Now, the engaged columns, the screen walls, would create a darker inside for the building, which is quite suitable for... Uh, a temple for the gods of the afterlife and it's very suitable here for the tomb of Erechtheus uh, and here I'm standing under the very tree of Athena the one she uh, had grown uh, and thanks to, to which she, uh, she she gained the patronage of the city of Athens right? because the Athenians found uh, more useful to have an olive tree rather than a salty water spring in the middle of the city 
the southern part of the Erechtheos has Erechtheion, sorry, has these, uh, very, this very interesting loggia or portico uh, with six statues instead of columns or pillars. They are girls, they are called Cariatids. Notice how they are painted, like the rest of the architecture. And uh, uh, notice also the thickness of the braid here, so that the neck looks uh, thicker. Uh, so that it can stand the weight of uh, weight of the building on top of the portico. Now, if you remember, uh, here we would have the ruins of the Temple of Athena Polias, and coming up, we would actually have this visual: us being here in the middle, the non-existing anymore ruins of the Temple of Athena Polias, and in the background, the girls who caused this destruction with their behavior. And they are uh, literally carrying the shame of their, uh, uh, their sins on their head. Uh, it's a quite interesting uh, arrangement here. To the right, we have the Parthenon, most important building. Now, as you can see, and as we said before, there are several altars, uh, places for offering. You see here with statues and vases and fruits and flowers. Uh, there are others uh, there where the, the horse marker is. Outside, because the ceremonies would be held outside. Huh? Uh, the, the rituals are not much uh, within the temple, are outside. So this is the altar which is set up on a staircase so that people around could see what's going on. And not everybody would be allowed or needed to be inside the temple. The Parthenon is uh, outside looking like a Doric building, uh, three steps, stereobati, which is quite uh, standard for a building. We are, we are in the back, as I said, because this is the western side, and we have this room serving as the Opistodomos, not quite the typical Opistodomos of a Doric building, we'll see. And then we have this extra room with four ionic columns, so Doric outside but ionic inside, uh, which is called uh, the Parthenon. Uh, Parthenon, this room, then gives the name to the whole building, um, which was probably originally the tomb of uh, some Mycenaean princesses, or at least they like to claim so, so that uh, they strengthen and stress their uh, Mycenaean ancestry. Uh, Parthenon means uh, belonging to the virgins, uh, Parthenon. Now here um, it is used like an opistodomos, like a sort of treasury, place to store objects of value, ex votos, like this food, but weapons and vases and, and jewels and chests, with all valuable. Uh, valuables. Now this is again the opistodomos or the back room. Uh, now we try to go around. This is the, the pteron or the side uh, passage between the wall and the columns. You see they have no base because it's Doric. And we go down running very fast to see the front of the building and to discuss uh, the nomenclature. Oh, what we have is then a temple that looks very much Doric with eight columns in the front, so an octa style building. It has um, a frieze with triglyphs and metops and a very prominent pediment with sculptures. Now, these sculptures at the moment are in London at the British Museum, uh, where they were taken at the beginning of the 19th century by a British diplomat who claimed he had purchased them from the Ottoman government. Uh, Greece at the time was still under Ottoman uh, control. The Greeks nowadays want these marbles back um, because they believe they belong to Greece, they belong to the place where they were created and they were supposed to be in this environment. And also because they are some of the most beautiful Greek sculptures ever created. The British or the British government, the British Museum is refusing to, to give them back. Um, on grounds that they were legitimately purchased. Okay, 
type. But what are the ethics behind this? It's not just a matter of market and money and buying and legislation. It's a matter of ethics. Can you go to a country, bribe somebody and take away some very precious sculptures and then you exhibited them in London where the Greeks can't enjoy them? enjoy them. So I strongly believe the Greeks uh, have uh, full right here. Um, as we said, Octa style, Doric. Uh, now I'm entering this area where the child is. Phoebe is the pronaos. Uh, it has six columns, one, two, three, and then three more on the other side. And the pronaos is pro style because the columns are in front of the building, you see, aligned with the wall. They are not in antis as a typical Doric building. So here we have, an, again, a building that looks perfectly Doric, but in fact it's not. It has features that belong to other buildings. Doric normally would have an in antis tetra style pronaos. Not only, if we go up, we have a continuous frieze along the inner wall. Now here it's painted, as a matter of fact, this, this was supposed to be sculptured, and sculptured by uh, some of the most famous sculptures in ancient Greece. Um, the friezes have uh, the depiction of the citizens of Athens going up to the Acropolis uh, and presenting the the new clothes to the statue of Athena. And for the first time we have, instead of gods and heroes and, and myths, we have the historical reality of Athens, the feast, the mulid, let's say, that every year is celebrated. So for the first time we have humans rather than gods. Um, we have also to notice the marble, the quality. It's very beautiful, the veins and the colors. This is pentelic marble, which is quarried not far from Athens. It's a very high priced uh, material, highly priced material. And since it was used for the Acropolis and for the Parthenon, then it was used by uh, other architects and for other buildings because it became very prestigious, beside the fact that it's a very nice stone. So as I cross the Pronaos, I am now entering through this uh, majestic door into the Naos, where we can see the beautiful statue of Athena, made of gold and made of ivory. Um, now the statue looks like it's made of marble, but actually uh, it, it was ivory, uh, pieces of ivory. Now you can see she has uh, a shield uh, and um, a spear and she's holding on a hand uh, a small uh, woman it's actually a goddess with wings and um, a wreath of laurel leaves and it's a symbol of victory she is the nike um, in front of the statue uh, there is this small pool of water which allows for reflection so you have to imagine when there was full light uh, the gold would be reflected uh, in, in, in the water. Huh? Um, the, uh, the, the Naos is uh, a very large building, it's probably more than 30 meters. So in order to support the roof, you could not have a beam made of wood from this wall to the other wall. Huh? This is too much space. You can't really find a tree that big. So they had to build this row of columns and this row of columns to actually support um, the, um, the roof. Huh? It's on two tiers. The columns of the second level are, uh, are uh, smaller. Huh? While the columns in the background, you see them, there are three and then three on the upper tier behind the sculpture of Athena uh, by Phidias, the famous uh, uh, sculpture. Uh, they are not supporting anything. If we remove them, nothing would happen. Uh, they're not really structural. They're actually um, only for beauty. Uh, so when you enter the statue is literally framed by the columns, like a sort of stage in a theater. 
Now, that's all from the Acropolis of Athens. I hope this video will be useful for you uh, to study. And uh, thanks for listening.